Hey everyone, good evening at my time when I was recording this, but good morning, good evening, good afternoon, good night, good whatever time of day it is. I wish you, you have a good day. But this isn't the end of the video. Oh, of course not. We have a couple more minutes left, probably like seven or nine, I guess. But can you guess what we're learning about today? Oh yeah, and I forgot. Welcome to Learn with Alicia. Can you guess what we're learning about today? If you haven't seen the last video, then maybe you uh, haven't guessed yet. But it's even more logic gates. Go see the last video if you want an explanation of what exactly logic gates is. There should be a link around here. Go check. There should be some kind of link. Anyhow, uh, if you didn't see the cursor, it's on the top right uh yeah sorry passed already whatever go back and click on it if you want to see it but anyhow if you have if you have seen it or if you know what it is and you just came here for extra information now then i'll just tell you this uh there are not that many logic gates that you need to know of that uh that aren't there usually but there are only some there's the NAND gate, the NOR gate, the exclusive OR or XOR gate, and the XNOR gate. Yeah, XNOR gate. There's also something called the buffer, but we'll get to that later. Jumping straight into the topic, what exactly is an XOR gate? This stands for exclusive OR. It's like a true OR. If you have one or the other, not none, not both, then you will get something out. The true, this statement is true. So say you have apple or orange. If you take the orange, the statement is you have an apple or orange. Yes, that's true. Same thing if you take the apple. If you take both, the statement is false. If you take none, the statement is also false. So that's a good analogy of how exactly an XOR works. Coming up next is the um, NOR gate. The NOR gate. So just think about it and tell me what you think it is. Got it? Now I'll tell you. So what it is, it's basically just a NOR, it's just an OR gate with an inverter in front of it, and people des decided that they wanted to simplify that and then made an a NOR gate. They just made that for probably simplification purposes. But, uh, I mean, yeah, of course, if you're going to have to use it that much. It's the early days of computing at this time. Anyhow, there should be a picture right about now, or there should have been a picture before. So yeah, it's basically the opposite of an OR gate. Up next is, um, oh yeah, the XNOR gate. It's an exclusive NOT OR gate. So just uh, think of an exclusive OR gate and then make it NOT. Basically that. But how it works is it's basically an exclusive not or. Like you have one or the other, and then it comes out one one. So then it's either none or both that give you ones. Okay. Either you have none of them or you have both of them. Those are the things that will give you ones in um uh, an XNOR gate. And last but not least, the uh, NAND gate. I'm not sure if I'm reading that properly, but I think it's NAND. What is this? Well, it's basically the same definition as a NOR gate, but just replace the OR with an AND. It's just an AND gate combined with a NOT gate.
and probably people used it so much that they decided, hey, we should probably simplify this. So that's probably how it was born. But I don't exactly know. Tell me in the description how exactly it was born and I will correct you. Or if you're correct, I will give you a tick. And that's good. That's good. Anyhow, so that is basically all of them. Uh, wait, was I forgetting something? Oh, right. I forgot. Uh, sorry, but uh, there's a bit more. The video didn't end yet. I'm so sorry. But this should only take about a minute because this is extremely simple. This gate is called the buffer. It's called a buffer because it does absolutely nothing. You get the same thing as when you put it in. You just put in something, you get out something. You get, you put in nothing, you get out nothing, basically. But what it does, it's basically an amplifier just pumping electricity into the circuit. Because, if you did not know this, computers run on electricity and same with gates. Gates run on electricity. So, when the power gets too low, the electric charge, if it gets too low, a buffer can come and save the day by instantly making the charge more powerful than it was before. Pretty cool, huh? Well, that's that's it, actually. We're done. Surprisingly, I got through that in only like four or five minutes, so... Uh, sorry to those who actually thought it was going to be like 7, 8, or 9 minutes long. Sorry. But, uh, oh wait, it has been 9 minutes. That was long. Anyhow, uh, I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.